For over 10 years, my wife Rochelle and I have been filming our overland adventures. Overlanding has provided an incredible roadway into the world. We have seen amazing places, encountered incredible cultures, and conquered daunting challenges with the Greater Expedition Overland team. One thing is for sure, it's a metric ton of fun to be out there exploring in this big, awesome world. But all that travel has come at a bit of a cost. The cost has been the time apart as a family while we built our future. And because of that, we have found ourselves for years longing for a special time when we can all explore together as a family. That time has come, and we have finally set off on our Croft family trip. We will be together in one truck traveling across our home state of Montana as a family, solo. We don't know for sure how long we will be gone, a couple weeks or a month. We will just let the spirit of travel take the lead. So yeah, we have three boys. So that means we should probably have parenting goals. With that said, I suppose we should take this trip as an opportunity to teach our kids as much as we can, to help them become more independent, all while under our watchful eye, of course. And you know, maybe we as parents just might learn a thing or two as well. As far as our family as a whole, I do hope this trip will strengthen our bond more than ever. If not, maybe it will be a solid starting point for future counselors to help the kids overcome their misguided childhood. Our Montana solo adventure is presented by General Tire and the Grabber X3 the official tire of the Croft Solo Adventure, available at TireRack.com and in association with Patriot Campers Toy Haulers and Peak Horror Systems. Our travel story begins here, in the farthest northwest corner of Montana, known as the Yak. This is one of the most remote regions and its vast forest provides one of the world's finest smelling air, no exaggeration. We are camped high to catch the mountain breeze to help ward off the thick population of mosquitoes. There are many species of them in Montana, but we are certain we are dealing with the most aggressive breed of all. They are small, but vicious. Despite the army of bloodsuckers, the mood tonight is bright, for today, is Cyrus's 15th birthday. His birthday dinner is a Dutch oven pork rib with barbecue sauce that sadly we have already burned while trying to film and cook at the same time. But like any good parent, you just tell them it's supposed to taste that way and thankfully they haven't seemed to notice. Anyway, it's a birthday that Cyrus will not likely forget. As far as sacrifice goes, Cyrus has probably given up the most to be here on this particular trip. He gave up going to driver's education to be here, pausing his ability to get his license for another year from today. And speaking of forgetting his birthday, we forgot to get a cake, so we need to improvise. Nights like these are few and far between. I look forward to as many of these types of nights in my life as possible. Perfect or not. Montana is our home. Our whole family was born in the Treasure State, but for being Montana natives, it's one of the states we have traveled in the least, despite it being one of the best. Montana is slightly larger than Japan. With an area of 147,000 square miles, it is the fourth largest state in the United States, 
It's full of mountain ranges, rivers, valleys, forests, and prairies. It's rugged and unforgiving. And that's why we are taking our summer vacation to experience it. In our preparations for this trip, in true ex-Overland style, we have had the opportunity to build our dedicated Overland vehicle for personal adventures in the years to come. I wanted a setup where I could take my whole family out to work, play, and live out of for extended periods. I wanted a heated unit so I can travel into the Montana winters as well. So that's what we did. Our cabin on wheels is built on an epic foundation a 2018 AEV diesel prospector with a PCOR flatbed from Patriot Campers. Standing on three inches of lift and 37 inch Grabber X3 tires, this truck can go a lot of places with respect to its size. To assist if it ever gets mired, it is equipped with worn winches. That's right, two of them. A 16 Ti in the front and a 12,000 pound in the rear. Air lockers will help keep the wheels turning and max tracks are placed on the roof for easy recovery and truck leveling. Communications include an ICOM 2 meter ham radio, a cellular signal booster, and an inner each mini connected to our Garmin Overlander navigation device that allows us to communicate and navigate completely off the grid. Mounted on the P-Core is a four-wheel camper's Hawk flatbed model camper. Inside the Hawk camper is a queen bed, a 26 gallon sink with hot water, stove, a table, and 200 amp hours of lithium power from Battleborn batteries. That house power is completely managed by the Red Arc Red Vision system. It allows us to control all systems in the camper, everything from distributing the overland solar panels on the roof to turning on water pumps, powering the refrigerator, and activating outside lights. In addition, the Bluetooth connection allows me to control the camper inside and out from my phone and gives me a perfect readout of what's happening to the power system at any time. The truck has a range of 500 miles while towing. It carries 44 gallons of water and can be out in the field for up to one month without a restock. Behind the truck is our coveted Patriot Camper TH610 toy hauler. This is a workhorse of a trailer that provides us with a full galley with an additional 30 gallons of water it hauls the kids easy on rooftop tent, camping gear, and stores and charges our production equipment that is also managed by Red Arc Manager 30 system. Its weight ratings easily transport our Polaris General 1000 XP. The upfitted General allows us to explore beyond camp to do our favorite activities like fishing and wheeling through the tough stuff, or to simply run to town if we need to with its 150 mile range. But now it's time to start putting all of this to work. Excited, Eli? Yeah. Where are you going? Canada. Canada? Canada. Huh. Which well, is right over there. Let's go see Canada, eh? Eh. Hold on to that for me. Okay. Now I'm not sure if it's obvious yet, but Eli loves adventure. So much so that just a couple years ago he asked about what happens when mom and I die. And if we do, does he get Expedition Overland? So anyway, we are sleeping now with one eye open. So we'll run in here and I'll show you what this radio site is. Okay. We'll walk in. Okay, so what you got here is a National Forest Weather Station. If you've never seen one of these, they're pretty cool. This is not where we get the internet. This is where the Forest Service gets a lot of weather data. So you got a radio broadcast tower, broadcast, tr transmits the, uh, the data, and then here is the snow tell site. So you don't step on this because it's full of liquid. See how it's full of water? 
kind of like a water bed or something. Anyway, it feels, senses pressure. These are all over the country. And you can go on their database and see what's the snow like. How deep is the snow? How much snow did they get? What temperature is it? What are the wind speeds up there? That's what this site does. And there's like, these are all over the world? They're all over the country, yep. Do they all share like a certain distance? I don't know, that's a good question. They put them in certain places that they want to know the data from. Pretty cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh man. Rock slide. Ah. A total of 1.4 miles as the crow flies to the Canadian border. We got pretty close. Canada, United States. Canada, United States. I know, it'd been fun to set, set a foot in another country, huh? Already the road is being reclaimed by nature. It would be fun to explore it further, but we must get back. All right, well, let's go back. Oh, God. <laughs> Good little exploration. Let's pack all this up and head down the mountain. We're going to find another campsite for tonight. Yeah, we're just going to drive this down, right? Now with it all in Oh, you think so, huh? Yeah. All right, let's go down the mountain. All right. Is everything uh, drenched up? It's our goal to make it down near the river tonight for camp. We'll be moving just about every day on this tour in an effort to see as much as we can in the weeks to come. Tomorrow, we'll get geared up and hit the river. Okay, and that's gonna be tilted up. We got our boat built and we're going to go explore and float a couple miles section of the Yak River. Uh, I've looked at this and it looks epic to fly fish. We've got the right boat to do it and today really though is about Ryder. He's learning to fly fish. He loves to fish and he's yeah, yeah. hopefully we can get him on something today because he really needs a win. To get the boat in the water upstream and allow us to retrieve the truck later, we use the side-by-side -side to create a shuttle system, and we'll take the truck back later to get it after we take out. Let's get your rod out. Now what do you call this lake? This is the Yak River. I think you go with this one. Okay. Yellow belly caddis or something. The audience see that? Yellow belly caddis. Stay left. left. Okay, going left. Oh. Woo! Excellent river to learn on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got some water in here. Well, here we are. Yak River, Montana. Having a lot of fun on this river. Fishing, swimming, boat riding on a boat. I'm having a great time. 
There you go, that's good. Put it right in there. Not bad. There you go. Line up. There you oh, go. Nice and, easy. nice and easy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Get the uh, get the uh, net. Give me the net. Net, net, net. Okay. There we go. Keep your rod up. Hand me that net. Keep them in the water. Keep them in the water. Just bring them in. Bring that rod up. Bring that rod up. That's your first fish on a river in it with the fly rod. Yeah. Oh boy, you got the bug now. Nice work, Ryder. Thank you. Yeah. Good job, Ryder. Tell the world that's how you catch a fish. No, that's, that's how, how you catch, catch a fish. fish. <laughs> nice. Now that's how you catch a fish. Yeah, the, says the pro. All right. Nice. Sweet. Is that good, Ryder? Should we keep heading down river? We keep heading down river. Back in the boat. Alright, now we're gonna spin. Alright, and we're off. Nice work, Ryder. That was awesome. Are you gonna tip me for being your guide? No. Oh, I thought you said tip me over. Oh, that's actually warm. See you later. Get out here and your troubles just melt away. I put so much effort into all these other things. But well, why do I put the same amount of effort to being in places like this? Yeah. What if, you know, would my life be better if I actually put more time into actually getting here? You know, I'll bet it would. It'd be a richer life. We have an amazing job. And we hope to inspire people to get out and do these kind of things. And it's really hard for us to actually get out and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of times we work for 11 months out of the year to be gone for one or six weeks and that's that's not a good uh, that's not a good uh, ratio either we love what we're doing but yeah we this is what we started all this to go do it more of and we we need to do more of it yeah we need to make it a priority yeah we should probably take our own advice probably should take our own Probably take our own advice. Here we go. Here we go. Woo! Woo! Was it the hammer Good day. Yeah, I caught my first fish in the whole entire year. I've been going at it for a whole year trying to catch one and I finally did today. Awesome. <laughs> Success! No one died. Thank you for all applying rule number one, which is? Don't die. Don't die. <laughs> Don't die. <laughs> All right, let's go eat something. So, mom and dad just let's go grab a side by side after a really awesome, fun time on the boat. So, it's just us three putting away all these boats, holding these boats. <laughs> Thank you.
If you're going to eat something at a restaurant in Yak, Montana, your options are limited. You'll be faced with the decision to eat at the Dirty Shame Saloon, if they're open, or take the alternate at the Yak River Mercantile. Whatever you decide, they are both delicious. And we all make gluttons of ourselves after a solid day on the river. We should all sleep well when the sun finally sets, which will be about 10 o'clock tonight. We're up early to head east toward Eureka, Montana. There's a special place where Rochelle and I got engaged many years ago now. After we set up an early camp, our bodies are itching to get out of the truck and take an evening look at Pinkham Creek Falls in grizzly country. We've found ourselves out of the yak and have wandered over towards Eureka, Montana. And today we're gonna to take a late evening hike up to a very special place called Pinkham Creek Falls. And this is the place where Rochelle and I got engaged. 17 years ago. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Ish. So we've got both locations marked on the GPS. We're ready to go. That's smart. Okay, Cyrus, got a question for you. Bear spray or firearm? Definitely. Hmm. You're going bear spray, you're going? Probably fire on. Okay, my answer, both. Uh, here's why. With bear spray, every single person needs to have one, obviously, because the if you're being attacked, you need to be able to spray at the bear. He's probably coming at you. With spray, I can't necessarily interact or stop somebody else's attack from happening. But with... A gun with a firearm, I can, I can shoot a bear over there and stop him from running or, you know, getting after my kid or something like that. Uh, I have the ability, what I'm getting at is I have the ability to interact with that bear from a distance when I may not be the one who's being attacked. So I carry a firearm for that reason. We have friends that uh, have been attacked. I have one in particular, Joe who uh, was attacked one day while carrying a rifle and bear spray. He was unable to get to his rifle in time when the bear attacked him, and it was his bear spray that saved him. The next day when he went in um, to recover the elk that they had uh, put down, uh, they walked in there with a, with a rifle again. So anyway, the answer is really both. Both of them are good. Both of them are very effective. And having both of them with you, not a bad idea. Just takes a little training with the firearms and uh, you've got the best of both worlds. Good job, bud. Doesn't feel right. It would have been right here Raging. No. This can't be right. Well, bummer. Yeah. Because from what I remember, I could it was, go for a flight real quick. It was tight. Oh, yeah. Why don't you do that? Okay. A quick flight solidifies our suspicion. The falls are nowhere to be found up or down river from our position. But oh well, right? It's just good to be The out. GPS says it's here. It is not here. I don't know what's going on, so we'll have to sort it out tomorrow. But it is 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes till sunset, and it's gonna get dark quick. Now, I told them all to bring their headlamps, and they were like, are we gonna be gone that long? 
Well, I said I hope not. <laughs> but I think we are going to be gone that long now. Yep. So, we're ready. We got a little food. Got a fire starter. I got a little shelter if we had to. And uh, got some water purification. We could be out all night if we had to. It'd be a cold night, but we could do it. Well, honey, when I was 20 or 21, I don't think I'd have been out of breath right now. <laughs> we were different kind of animals back then. We were mean and lean. Yeah, Shelly was 19. I was, I just turned 21. Whew. I don't feel like I'm 21 right now. But I'm still doing it. Still out here doing it. There we go. Came in from the back. Back at camp, we have a quick cold dinner that's nothing to speak of and turn in. Tomorrow, we will try again. The boys are getting really good at packing up their tent. I've been grading them every morning. If it's an A, awesome. Anything less is 10 push-ups per grade. Let's just say that it took one day, and since then, it's A's for days. We're all packed up, ready to go. We're gonna head out, find this elusive falls. We have a hunch that the real Pinkham Creek Falls is a little bit up the way. And I've also concluded that the locals like this area labeled wrong on the map. So we will keep it that way and keep its location hidden. guess my decision because had I dropped the ring that would have been that and I was nervous so I didn't want to drop the ring but I was very careful and I wonder if there's any more of those down there I have to say, it's a little funny to be here again. It seems as the last 17 years has gone by in a blink. I guess I feel more humbled and thankful than anything. I'm a fortunate man to be here some 17 years later with my bride and best friend. And who knew all those years ago when we sat here that we would sit here again while our three boys played in the water above us. And 
every step beyond the wall. Already these boys are closer to being men than kids. No hope they have as many adventures and more as I've been fortunate to have. But most of all, I hope God blesses them with a wife that will help them become far better men, just as Rochelle has done for me. So here's to the unknown road. It may lead us here again or not. We will just have to wander on to find out. And I stared the darkness 